click subscribe, click the thumbs up on our messages, click the little bell. Get your friends saved, get your family saved. Father, we thank you for this uh, another uh, great uh, time in your word that we're going to have here tonight as we study about the end times. And Father, God, I ask that you would cause our minds and our hearts to be alert and to be open to receiving your word. And Father, we thank you for that now in Jesus' name. And Father, God, I ask that uh, everyone at home and everyone watching this anytime in the future would not have any part of this robbed from them at all. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen and amen. You're welcome to take your seats here tonight. Ushers, if you would, come on forward. And if you're watching live via the internet, we're glad to have you watching. If you're watching on our uh, YouTube channel or or some other platform, we're glad to have you watching as well. Uh, go ahead and click like and click share. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and click subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. And if you're watching on Facebook, uh, let us know that you're watching. You're also, uh, you can also make comments uh, while you're watching. Mm -hmm. And become a regular financial partner with this ministry, and you can do so. Go to our website, mountainfaith.org. Tonight we're going to be talking about the, uh, the series of events going from the rapture. And we're, this is going to be a discussion more than just you know me preaching. Um, uh, from the rapture to the tribulation to the millennial reign to the white throne judgment. And, and I'm, we're just going to cover it kind of casually, but also be covering some very interesting things that I've never talked about before. The first thing about this, and you can also get this off our website, I make up and update this uh, seven uh, feast timetable. This is the Jewish feast timetable that is actually the timetable for all the end time events uh, that we're, that we're going to be going through. The spring uh, feast of the Jews have already been fulfilled prophetically with Jesus going to the cross. And you have to, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, go to our website. This is available on our website. If you can't figure it out, uh, just uh, call us or write us and we'll send out a free copy to you. No charge. And But the the Fall feasts that are coming up shortly are uh, trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and booths or tabernacles, uh, which are all mm -hmm. fall feast things. We've already went through the spring. Yes, so. we've already gone all the way through the spring. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and weeks all were prophetically filled, fulfilled 2,000 years ago uh, if, when Jesus went to the cross and then when the day of Pentecost had come. <laughs> now, the fall feasts are going to be starting very shortly. And the first fall feast prophetically fulfilled uh, seventh, you know, the feast of the Jews timetable, that's going to be coming up shortly. And that's when Jesus will appear on the clouds and he's going to, there will be a, a, a trumpet and the dead in Christ will rise and then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up with the Lord and so we shall ever be with the Lord. And then it says over in the book of Isaiah that we shall enter our rooms and, and we shall close the doors behind us while the wrath of God mm -hmm. comes upon the earth and the wrath of God comes upon the earth for seven years. And we're going to be able to look down and see what's happening uh, from our rooms about the wrath of God. Then at, that, at the end, the, the second return of Christ will appear at the end of that seven-year timetable of the tribulation, and then Jesus is going to come back to the earth, terra firma, for a second time. And then he's going to bring all of us with him. We're going to come as his saints, and we're going to come in our glorified bodies. So what we're going to be looking at tonight is the timeline of things happening and so what I want to do is just read some scriptures. And why don't we start out tonight, Kathy, in uh, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24. And we're going to jump around in Matthew 24 a little bit. Okay. And so let me go there as well. In Matthew 24, we see uh, the, Jesus is giving us the timetable of events uh, that are going to be happening in the last days. And we see that first he t gives a parable of um, the ten virgins, those that are ready and those that aren't ready upon okay. his return. If, uh, and if you jump back to chapter 24, Kathy, uh, and verse uh, 42, why don't you start reading verse 42. 
Therefore be on the alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have been on the alert and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. For this reason, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. Right. So what we have, and what, if we have time, we'll get to the, some of the other scriptures, comparable scriptures that match up with this. But what, we do not know the day of the hour. That's right. But Jesus said we will know the season. And if we know the season, then we're going to know, we're going to be able to figure out an approximate timetable without giving the day or the hour. When anyone gives the day or the hour, they are always going to be incorrect. But always. if we not, not only know the season, the season could even be down to a short two month window of time. That's quite possible to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate how that might be possible maybe sometime t here tonight on this discussion. But a lot of things are happening in the news. If we look at everything that's happening in the Amen. news now, uh, we see prophecies being fulfilled probably quicker than any other time in history, including the prophecies of Jesus going to the being born and going to the cross. Um, so, and we see a lot of end time events uh, that even uh, Hollywood, is making movies about asteroids, making movies about the end of the age, making movies about uh, giant upheavals of nature. Right. That is part of the end time picture that scripture gives us. And now the reality is aligning right now with prophecy. What we're seeing happening in the news, what we're seeing happening uh, with lawlessness all over the earth. Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Uh, and I don't need to go into any detail, but we happen to be living in a very safe state, but there's a lot of states that are not safe at all. That's right. And they've become very lawless uh, in a very, very short Many period of, of time. Many of our cities in our, con in our right, own right, country right. are not safe. Right, right. And even, I know of one big city in our state uh, that's become, to a certain extent, lawless, but it's not like other states. Not no. like other states no. at all. As a matter of fact. Okay, go ahead. I, I subscribe to a, a newsletter from Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, I got a news, one of them came in today. And a person came at gunpoint. They held up two children, 10 and 12 year old. Where was this at? Milwaukee. This is in Milwaukee. And when did this Yesterday. happen? Yesterday. Yesterday. And they stole their puppy, four month old puppy, at gunpoint. So nobody was hurt. Puppy's gone. Um, but that's just like, that's even not even imaginable when I was a kid. I mean, a lot of violence out there. Just to say. All right, so Go now uh, in chapter 24 of Matthew, not chapter 25, but chapter 24 of Matthew, mm -hmm. Kathy, I want you to uh, read for me starting in verse 32. Now learn the parable from the fig tree when its branch has already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near right at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. All right, so the first thing uh, that we see happening in verse 32 is it says, now learn the parable of the fig tree. Whenever we see a fig tree uh, reference in scripture, it almost exclusively refers to Israel. Okay. All right. When did Israel become a state again? 48. In 1948, May 14th, 1948. So that May 14th is coming up here in a couple days. Israel will be 74 years old, okay? Now he says concerning the fig tree, when its branches become tender, put forth to leave, you know that summer is near. So you too, when you see all these things, recognize he is near right at the door. So we have even a seasonal kind of a reference, not uncommon. So it's not uncommon for us to have a seasonal reference covering a decade or covering uh, several years. But I think as we're getting now closer, to Jesus' return. I think that we can be, we may, we certainly can narrow down the season based on the prophetic timetable that I have described here in my form that the, all the fall feasts are in the fall. 
So the next event is going to be a fall event. There's no question about it. And it's going to be prophetically filled. Now this year, trumpets is going to happen on for two days on September 26th and September 27th, beginning on uh, September 26th at, at 6 p.m. in the evening. Okay. And then going until... Uh, two days, in, or two, or probably uh, September 25th at 6 p.m. in the evening, and then running for two days to evening of the 27th. So uh, that's a fall date on the calendar. One of the things that, right. if you've heard me teach uh, uh, any time on the Israeli calendar, or we'll call the biblical Mosaic calendar, the Jews aren't operating by the b biblical Mosaic calendar right now, and they can't because they don't have any priests that are watching for the moon, the sl first sliver of the moon at the beginning of the year in the spring to determine when the Mosaic calendar starts. What they're using is, is a 19 year calculation based on a Chinese calculation that, that all of Christendom and Judaism accepted back in the third century. And so now that's being followed, but because it's man's calculation and not God's calculation, we can't be sure for a fact if the, these days in 2022 are in the actual month. We could be a month before or a month after, or we could be a day or two off. So with all that said, um, the calculations might be really close, but they might not be and recognize it in the Mosaic calendar if they didn't see a sliver of the moon the first night and if they didn't see it the second night because of cloud cover, then they, they actually added a month. That's how you got a leap month in the Jewish calendar that made up for the, because they only had 30 days in their monthly calendar, that you, you're, you're going to be falling back. You have to have a leap month to catch up. And God would just plan it to have cloud cover to, to do that. But this hasn't happened for 2,000 years since the Jews were expelled out of Jerusalem. So um, what we have is a real uh, conundrum and trying to figure out, this is why when people come up with all these blood moons, what they're doing, it, 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 they're doing it on a best guess basis. They're not doing it on biblical, what I'll call biblical science. And so every time I see people getting fanatical about blood moons, I generally will come up with another blood moons teaching, particularly on the Jewish Mosaic calendar compared to the modern day Jewish calendar that is a 19 year cycle uh, in, in order to approximate whether they think these spring and fall feasts are on these particular days. That said, we still know that the next three fall feasts, trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and booths or tabernacles is going to be, they're all fall feast. They're all going to be prophetically fulfilled within a seven year period of time. Trumpets will be when we're called up here. Okay. That's going to be the great shout from the clouds and the dead in Christ will be raised first. And then those who are alive and remain, will be caught up with him in the air. And so we shall ever be with the Lord. Then there's going to be a day of atonement. That's going to be happening at the very beginning of the seven year tribulation. All right. So that gets fulfilled. So right. the saints will already be gone. The though. saints will already be and gone. This would be this is the day of atonement for those who are left behind. The day of atonement for those who are left behind. Okay. Right. And and um, a lot of things are going to be happening uh, there. Uh, the temple is going to be rebuilt. The sacrifice, according to the Jews, is going to be reinstituted. Because remember, the, the non-Messianic Jews don't know that the blood sacrifice has already been fulfilled. So uh, blood sacrifices, animal sacrifices are going to uh, begin again. And then Jesus, at the end of the se that seven-year period of time, he, Jesus will return in the fall just like the other, these other two feast days, which are still prophetically unfulfilled, all right? So now, armed with all that information, we, he says, now learn from the fig tree when the branch has already become tender, puts forth its leaf. You know, some are near, so too. When you see all these things happen, recognize that he is near. Then he says in verse 34, truly I say to you, this generation, He's not talking about the generation that he's living in at that moment in time that he's speaking to. He's talking about the generation that sees Israel become a nation again. Right. And we know prophetically it's, it said, can a nation 
uh, can a nation be born in one day? That was an Old Testament prophecy, and Israel became born in one day, May 14th, 1948, and within 24 hours, it was at war with all of its neighbors, because all of its neighbors hate Israel, just as a policy. Still do. Still do, right? <laughs> uh, you know, um, see, uh, Abraham never should have had uh, gone into uh, his, his wife's servant and had a baby and had Ishmael. Ishmael is the father of all the Arab races. And they uh, said concerning him, prophetically, that he shall have his hand against all of his brothers, and all of his brother's hand shall be against him. So talking about just the infighting amongst Arabs today that you see in the Middle East, they don't trust one another, and they fight with one another, mm -hmm. but their common enemy is the other son of Abraham, called Isaac, and so they're at war. These two nations, these mm -hmm. two great nations that became nations, Ishmael became a great nation just right along with Isaac became a great nation. So they're at war with one another. It's a very, very biblical, you know, uh, people say, how can we get the Arabs and, or, or the, you can say Muslims, but Arabs as a generality, how can we get them to be at peace with one another? Biblically, you can't no. uh, until the millennial reign. In the millennial reign, you're gonna see Arabs and Jews living at peace with one, at peace with one another. But you can't be giving away land in Israel to get peace. It just does not work. Right. It, uh, it is against their religion and it's against the Jewish code of religion uh, of Judaism uh, really to, for them to be at peace with one another. So really we are in the last days. We're in the last days. Because what, maybe Israel might make it to 120, you know? Okay, well, let's, I have something to say about that. Let's. Um, Let's go over to Psalm 90. Everyone mark your Bibles uh, in Matthew 24 because we're going to come back here. Let's go over to Psalm 90, Kathleen. Psalm 90. How old were we supposed to live uh, when Adam and Eve were created? Forever. Forever. We were supposed to live forever. Because Adam and Eve sinned, God said, in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Well, he, that his day that he was giving was a thousand years. It was a prophetic thousand years. Abraham, excuse me, Adam lived to be 930 years old. And so he died prior to a full thousand years. We were, but we were designed to live forever in our mortal body on earth. Right? I've heard some preachers say when they get to heaven, you know, because we weren't supposed to be wearing clothes. We we're supposed to be laying under our vine, never being cold, and, and eating grapes all day, and having our woman drop grapes into our mouth, body da. And so, I, uh, you know, so you've heard, you've heard preachers say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to kick, you know, Adam in the shins for eating the fruit, right? Because he ruined it for the rest of us. Remember, it was Eve that tempted Adam. And she was deceived, but Adam was not. And he basically, you know, I, I can point to a lot of other scriptures about uh, what it's like to live in, in a house with a contentious wife. It's better to live in the corner of a rooftop of a house than live with a contentious wife. We don't know if Eve was contentious. Don't give me that look. That's in scripture. I saw you giving me that look. We're going to talk later on. What Adam. look? All right. <laughs> anyway, so that's in scripture. And, um, and uh, so we don't know if Eve harangued Adam into it. But Adam, for whatever reason, Adam went along with the, with the, with the plan well, yeah, and did. ruined it for the rest of us. Yeah, he did. Okay. All right. Okay. I saw that look too. <laughs> anyway, so um, uh, here we are. And, and then after the flood, we find out in Genesis chapter 7 that we're to live for 120 years. How many people are living to 120 years any longer? Not too many. Not too many. And we can go over to that scripture really quick. Right. But if you look at Psalm 90, um, start reading in verse 9. For all our days have declined in your fury. We have finished our years like a sigh. As for the days of our life, they contain 70 years, or if due to strength, 80 years. 
yet their pride is but labor and sorrow, for soon it is gone and we fly away. All right, so this is a prophetic statement about how mankind is actually going to be living 70 years uh, if he's strong and 80 years if he's very strong. Right. Okay. And so uh, we like that. Uh, you know, that's something to stand on. We can live longer than that, and we know that. You know, George Burns died at age 100. We know, I think, Harry Morgan, uh, the actor, died, I think, at age 98. Uh, that other actor uh, uh, that recently died, he died He died at age 100 and was married to his wife for 62 years. That he, he did the uh, Spaghetti Westerns with Clint Eastwood. He, he played the bad Eli guy. Eli Wallach. Eli Wallach, uh, who was Jewish, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so he died at age 100. Anyway, um, so armed with this information about 70 years or 80 years, mm -hmm. we know that we can start the timetable to know. Remember, this is an end time scripture. So the end time timetable for those that were born for just even a day prior to May 14th, 1948. Right now, they're 74 years old. And he's saying 70 years or 80 if they're, if they're strong. Well, Israel's strong. So we could, we could go another six years. six years before the timetable really starts ticking down. The, the, that means that some people that saw the birth of Israel, whether they saw it you know, intellectually or they, you know, they read about it later on because they were born on that date or prior to that date, uh, we know that the timetable is dropping and there will be people alive, mm -hmm. presumably in their 80s, but right. it could be just their 70s. So we're, we're reusing up time. We really are. So prophetically speaking, we're in the last days. All right, right. so that's happening. That's, that's one of the first things that's, uh, that's happening. Let's go over to uh, Joel chapter 3, Joel chapter 3, and read for me starting in uh, verses 1 and 2. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Then I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my inheritance Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and they have divided up my land. All right, so God is going to enter. We know that this is part of the end time timetable and we know that this is going to be happening in uh, Israel. This is talking about Armageddon or you know, Armageddon, however uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you want to pronounce it from the original Hebrew. And so this is an event that God is going to judge the nations at that time. That's this, during the seven year tribulation. Now, let's go over. So, back. is that the white throne of judgment? No, that's, that's a good question, but that's not the white throne judgment. That is the judgment on the nations coming against Israel. Israel. Okay. Uh, in order to understand that a little bit better, let's go over, just back up a few pages, really, and go to the book of Ezekiel. And let's start out and look at uh, chapter 38. And start reading for me in verse 1. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Uh, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal. I will turn you about and put your and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them splendidly attired, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them wielding swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and put with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer with all its troops. Beth Tomar from the remote parts of the north with all its troops, many peoples with you. All right, so what this, what this is, is this is referring, first of all, to the land where Russia exists right now. Yes. Uh, Gog is the territory, Magog is the leader. Um, Putin is probably not going to live much longer. In fact, God told me to prophesy now back, what, some six weeks ago that Putin, his life isn't going to last much longer. 
and then we're going to see a time of peace in Russia for a, a short period of time. And not only peace in Russia, but in the, in the meantime, there are a lot of nations that are being mentioned here. These are the ancient right. nations, but they're, we know how they're represented when we do the book work. And we know that these nations are aligning themselves with Russia, many of them against Israel. Yeah. So we see China aligning themselves with Russia, and we know that China will be one of the nations uh, marching on Israel during yes. Armageddon. And so these alliances are being built, but alliances are not built just because men are alive. Alliances are being built because God is, is either orchestrating it or allowing it because it fulfills scripture. And so the one person may get, like, for example, uh, uh, Golda Meir, who was one of the prime ministers of Israel, she's dead now, yes. but she was very influential in moving Israel ahead, politically speaking, uh, both uh, locally yes. in, in Israel and to the world. But she's dead. Right. But the work that she did carries on, all right, as, as all the previous prime ministers of Israel. So the, those that are uh, leaders in Russia today, those that are leaders in these other, uh, other, we'll call end time countries that are being mentioned here, prophetic countries, and they're aligning themselves with Israel, their leaders will die. But the alliances they make will carry on. It's, it, it's just protocol that those alliances will carry on, generally speaking. And you know, I don't want to get too Correct. specific. Right. And so we see that we're in the last days as these alliances are being made. So the question comes up, um, you know, could Jesus uh, return anytime soon? The answer is yes. Will Putin um, set off some nukes? I, according to what God spoke to me, the answer is no. A lot of people are are saber rattling and they're all in, a lot of people are in fear but if we're Christians we had there's no fear here That's right uh, for several different reasons number one before the tribulation begins we're going to get raptured out of here which is what I just described uh, when we began and uh, there's going to be rumors there's going to be wars and rumors of wars are we hearing we know about this war in the Ukraine are we hearing about other rumors of wars and the answer is yes in fact, all of the media is a big rumor mill, you know, uh, right. uh, talking about potentials and possibilities. So that's fulfilling scripture, right? So the, uh, first of all, we have to see the fig tree. The fig tree now is turning 74 uh, years old. And so it, really big deal, 75 years, a year from now. That's going, to be, uh, that's going to be something that I'm going to keep my eye on, uh, speaking. And we know that we can't be going that much further, that much longer, okay? Um, let's go back to Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. Read verse 8 for me, please. Well, and back up, back up. Um, start reading verse 6. You will be hearing of wars and rumor of wars. See that you are not frightened, for those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. All right, so Jesus is talking to us, and he said, you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars, but don't be frightened. That's right. So what should the Christian church and the individual Christians be doing right now when we see the news? Let's not be afraid. That's right. Right? Exactly. It's, let's stand tall. Stand tall. And not be afraid. We, there's nothing here to fear. Let's keep reading. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. Do we know of famines happening right now? Uh, we know in the Ukraine there's famines going on, but yep. there's famines going on all over the planet yep. in different locations. South Africa. All right. South America. All right. Uh, read verse 8. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. Okay, stop. How many children have you had? Eight. Eight. La eight, last count, right? And was there... A, a place where you had birth pangs. Yes. And did the birth pangs get quicker and quicker and closer and closer as you got yes. to having each one of those babies? Right, yes. So uh, each one of your children. So 
my point being is, is that we're in prophetically speaking, if we're talking, Jesus is, is not just being clever. He's being led by the Holy Spirit and said the birth pangs, as you get closer to that prophetic time, as we are in now, events will speed up. Right. Notice. We, you and I watch the news, you know, and sometimes, thank goodness, we have, we, you know, we, like we turned it off yesterday just for the whole day. Uh, and you're not like we're sitting at home watching television because we're not doing that, but we do have our favorite programs that we like to watch early in the morning or late at night. And you notice uh, when they're talking about a news cycle, I've heard the term news cycle now used a lot for like 10 years, and now it's being used a lot, a lot. And they say, when a, an event happens on Monday and it's still in the news cycle on Thursday, that's a big deal. And they're talking about Elon Musk. And I remember one, uh, one talking head two weeks ago said, Elon Musk, Musk is still in the news and it's Thursday. And what he announced on Monday is still being talked about. And when he put out on whatever, on Twitter. So the news cycles are shortening up where a massacre in a mall doesn't stay in the news for seven days. Right. It disappears correct. from the news in a day. Yeah. Uh, someone gets shot, it disappears from the news. Uh, it, any event, whether it's political or whether it's territorial or even an event of, of a hurricane or tornado killing people, that event is off the news cycle. And so what we see if you've ever seen a seismic event recording where it's up and down, up and down, up and down, and then it gets really tight because that's the peak of the seismic event, that's what we're experiencing right now. All these different events are collapsing together in a very short period of time where we see murders on the streets, we see, uh, we see murderers being put out without bail immediately, like in California and New York, immediately, the same day. They're not even held. There's no bail, get, and they go back out and they, they can do whatever they want to do and murder again. So these, but it's off the news radar in four hours, five hours. And then some other event happens, some other shooting happens, some other uh, uh, upheaval of nature happens. And these events are collapsing in time, just like birth pangs. So we know we're in the end of the age for that reason as well. All right. right? So these are, these are the birth pangs that he's, he's referring to here. Here's an important scripture too, though, in verse 12, it says, uh, well, many false prophets will arise and will mislead many right. because lawlessness is increased. Most people's love will grow cold. Right. Is lawlessness being increased? Yes. And, and why is that? There's a bunch of reasons. Uh, you name whatever you think. Sin. You got, you got God's been taken out of everything. We don't, he's not in the schools anymore. There's no more school prayer. Um, there's not even a pledge of allegiance. Mm -hmm. And if there is, they took God's name out. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're focused on, we're focused on, uh, on uh, us because this mm -hmm. world is all about us. Mm -hmm. Do I, do I have feel good moments? I mean, am I being treated well? Mm -hmm. um, am I, am I wearing the right kind of perfume? Do I have, you know, um, my little heart's desire? Do I, do I have any delayed gratification? Hopefully not. We wouldn't, wouldn't want delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where you have to wait until you get something. Um, so there's just, uh, it, it's all, it's all a me, me, me society right now. Mm -hmm. and, we're, and it's all about, it's all about us. It's all about our pleasure and what we like. And it's not about God anymore. God is, God is like. And the church has abdicated its responsibility to tell the absolutely, truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look at this. Now, I, I did not know this, but that swimmer. Yes. That's winning all these races. Mm -hmm. I thought he, he got an operation and got stuff cut off. Mm-hmm. I only found out last week or two weeks ago that he's still a biological male and he just identifies as a female. So he uses wow. the female bathrooms. He's all completely there. Uh, we know of uh, uh, one guy that, that is, that's got arrested back about six months ago and he had, he was in a, I think a junior high and was um, abusing young girls at the junior high, but he identifies as a female, so the school system let him use the, the, the girls' 
locker room, the girls' bathrooms. I mean, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so, and where is the church? The church is afraid to stand, stand up and say anything. That's right. That's right. Where's the church? It's, if the church doesn't do its job, society, there's no, right. society can't do its job. And so, um, if the, but we also see too, that many people in the church that have good rules are just going like, well, yeah, I, I believe in that. But when it comes to politics and lawmaking, I'm not going to believe in that. So I'm going to pass laws that suit my political party, but don't suit God. And I don't care. Right. And, and for the most part, I think a lot of these churches don't preach about sin anymore. Like, you know, you don't want to bring up homosexuality. You don't want to bring up the transgender. You don't want to bring up uh, divorce. You don't want to bring up um, abortion. I mean, those, those are subjects that we, a, lot of, a lot of these preachers do not touch. Okay, but then on the other hand, let's look at all the different preachers out there that are on their second and third marriage, and they have these congregations. M massive, so, massive So adultery doesn't apply to them, right? Because I repented and I'm all good now. But you know, you're, you, 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 but we're we're in a, a society that is quickly falling. Right. You know, it, it just we're quickly falling. And, and, and look at church attendance. You know, COVID was the perfect out for church attendance. Right. Like, OK, so I, 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 I I'm being told to stay home, so I'm going to stay home. And mm. now I'm liking it. I don't want to go back to church. And so um, that's not just our church. And, and that's, that and, and, church, church is all across the country. And employers are having the same problem getting people to come back to their desk. They're saying that they don't want. They're afraid of COVID, and in some states, that they say, "Well, we're afraid of mass transit uh, because it's dangerous out there." Right. Okay. So Apple um, had. If you, I don't know if you know about the news here, but but Apple's a big company, and a lot of their people work from home, and because they can do it, they got the technology. So then the CEO announces, "Guess what, folks? You all got to come back to the office. So we want to ease you in. We're going to do one day a week." Then we're going to move it up to three. Then hopefully we'll get to five. Holy cow. I mean, and, and no, they had a meltdown. I mean, they did. And, 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 that, and, and that happened what? That happened what? Last Friday, last yeah. Thursday, and something like Twitter that? And Twitter employees had a meltdown because Elon, Elon Musk bought Twitter and they had a meltdown, so they needed a day. A day of space, so they, they need could a, day, like a day of weeping. Is what they had. <laughs> they, even the, the the top attorneys were were seen weeping at these big uh, employee meetings. So you know, we've went, we really raised a generation. I mean, we're we're living in a generation where we're, we're allowing people to be weak. I mean, look at look at what what happened when Trump won. And all the people, you know, they, they thought the world they was got out. In the, no, they yeah. got out in the streets and they did this screaming in front of the cameras. Yeah, yeah. Right. The, the reality is, is that people used to work harder. Yes. People used to try harder. Uh, people used to, so. uh, 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 you know, people would. Um, when I grew up as a boy, I mean, my parents would shoo us out of the house 10 minutes before the bus showed up in a, in a blizzard, in a storm, and we'd have our feet wrapped in newspaper in our rubber boots to keep our feet warm, right? And if we, you know, how dare you even try to complain when you come home, you know? Yeah. And I remember coming home and go, oh, my feet are cold. And you go, mm. ah, yeah, you'll toughen up. You know, yeah. Just like, and, and you know, I don't know if we toughened up or, or you know, if our blood thickened or whatever, but, um, we are living in a different age right now yes. where it's a it's a very cushy age and it also we're living in a different age that you and I didn't experience as, as children and neither did our children but our children's children are and that is where the, the social media you know where there's bullying online mm -hmm. um, there's a suicide rate with uh, uh, teenagers because they're being bullied you know via, via stuff like uh, Facebook and uh, TikTok and all these different mediums out there. And that's another thing is, 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 is how do you protect your child against these mediums? You know, mm -hmm. how, how, how do you protect them against people they're going to meet? Yeah. You know, so just, I mean, I'm really, that's, you know, that's a tough thing. You know, when our kids were growing up, we homeschooled our kids. And I remember there was a lot of things that came up against homeschoolers. And, you know, why was we we were concerned enough that we bought an insurance policy that protected homeschoolers mm -hmm. from uh, attacks from local school boards. Right. And, you know, the, the kinds of things that you and I dealt with with our children were quite a bit. But I'm glad I'm not raising any kids now. 
I really am happy. Right. right. You know, that finally get them out the door, you know, please don't come back. So, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, don't, I just don't want to go, you know, I, I did my time. Yeah. You and I, we did our time yeah, with our it's, children. It's tough. It's, it's, a, it's a whole different world nowadays. Right, now, right. Sure. So um, now uh, jump down to uh, in Matthew chapter 24 now and start reading in verse 36. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven nor the Son, but the Father alone. Mm -hmm. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. All right, so let's stop here. What were, I, I don't have the slide here tonight, and I don't want to use it, but I came up with 14 reasons for the flood, mm -hmm. which will be the same 14 reasons for the rapture of the church and the seven-year tribulation. And those things are abortion on demand and what we read in uh, Josephus and also in Jasher that women were drinking a dreg yes. and men, uh, there was wife stealing going on, uh, just like there's wife stealing going on today. Uh, but men would have, would steal wives and the men that could afford it would have women for beauty and women for bearing children and the women for beauty were told to drink a dreg mm -hmm. of, of some concoction that automatically aborted their babies. Right. And we see today that over half the abortions now being performed in the country are over the counter. They're being performed yes. by an abortion pill. Like a pill. Yeah. So um, uh, in, in, once that happened, once that's, that begins to happen, uh, you're going to, even if uh, the United States said to the, even if the Supreme Court says, we don't want to be involved in this, which is basically, they're saying that it's not a inalienable right to get an abortion. They pass it back down to the states. Even if all the states out loud it, what would you be able to get? Right? You'd be able to get black market. Yeah, you'd get an illegal abortion uh, if you really it, wanted it. Black market uh, pill. Mm -hmm. to have an abortion. And so that's probably already happening. And when I, as I'm speaking right now, I'm saying it's, it's probably a sure thing. The reality is, is that we can get drugs. We can get all kinds of fentanyl and all kinds of drugs are coming over the border. Fentanyl is being made you know, uh, according to uh, different people that have researched it that are in the news, in legitimate news, news circles. Uh, the majority of the fentanyl is being manufactured in China. And even over-the-counter drugs now, you know, aspirin and other things have are laced with fentanyl, and it's not being told on on the box. But what is that doing? It's getting Americans addicted to things that we don't even know we're getting addicted to. It's having an effect on us. Mm -hmm. So, all, I mean, all these evil things are happening. Uh, so, homosexuality was rampant just before the flood. Abortion was rampant just before the flood. Wife stealing was rampant just before the flood. Murder was rampant and lawlessness was rampant right before the flood. And uh, not only Noah, but Noah's grandfather, Methuselah, was a preacher. Noah and Methuselah were preachers of righteousness. Uh, and no one wanted to listen to him. No one wanted to listen to what they had to say. So that there was a great falling away just prior to the flood, which is what we're seeing today. Right. Now, a lot of people are hoping that uh, certain people get back into power politically and that it will go well for our country. I get that. We'd like to see that. But will that bring people back to church? And the mm -hmm. answer is no. Not necessarily. Prosperity does not bring people back to church. I have a good friend that's a pastor in Los Angeles. He said... The average income for a teenager in Los Angeles that is willing to work yeah. is $70,000 a year. Teenager. He said, any teenager that's willing to work in Los Angeles can make 70 grand. He said, he said you know how hard it is to get people into church when they have prosperity like that? Yeah. So prosperity doesn't bring people back to church. Nope. And poverty doesn't bring people necessarily back to church. Right? If God doesn't move on this nation and bring revival, I, I, I believe he will before this next 
occurring event and how are we doing on time. So there are some other things that are happening in the news. All right, I wanna, I wanna talk about this. There are some things that are gonna happen during the tribulation. Uh, one of them will be an asteroid called Wormwood. We don't have time to look at all these scriptures tonight. We'll continue it next week. But we came home from a Bible study on April 14th, 2010. Right. Our, all of our children were with us or whoever was living with us at the time. We all came home and we have a two-story farmhouse. And it's a 100-year-old farmhouse. And uh, we came home. It was late. It was dark. I just finished eating. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, walk to the top of his stairs that go up to the second floor. At the top of my stairs, look west. Okay, so I got a big window at the top of our stairs, and the Holy Spirit said, sit down, open up the window and sit down. So the leaves, we have a giant, giant 130-foot maple tree right there, right up next to the window, but there was no leaves on it. And I'm sitting there, and I got the window open. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking out going, and it was a, it was a force telling me to sit there. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking out, and all of a sudden, the whole sky got like 10 times brighter than the sun, than, than, than midday. Right. It w and it was white, blue, white light. And then in slow motion, you know how people say they see things in slow motion? I saw in slow motion right behind our maple tree, just above the treetop, but behind it. Like for you and I, maybe it would have been uh, 150 feet behind the tree going west looking west and it was very low to the ground and it was moving slowly and I could count five parts to it and it boomed at first it was made a loud noise coming in and then it boomed sonic boom and according to this this is a study by two different places in Wisconsin and Wisconsin National uh, H Historical uh, Survey and then another one from the meteor fragment so it was considered a meteor and it came over the sky Mm -hmm. And I saw it, and I'm screaming downstairs, do you guys see that? And then you said you saw the tail end of it. And then I could see the trajectory, and I thought, why did God want me to see that? What was so important that I needed to see? And, and the first part that I'd like to talk about tonight is this meteor that's going to come and hit the earth. Mm -hmm. It's going to become called Wormwood because it's going to turn the waters and the seas to Wormwood. And, and when a meteor hits that's as big as what they suppose, then it's going to burn up a good part of the earth when it does that. Okay. These kinds of things are gonna be happening during the tribulation, predictably maybe right around mid-tribulation. So anyway, I see this thing. No one knew that this meteorite was coming in. And then it got hushed within a day. No one in Wisconsin was talking about it. You had to wait a while to find any information at all. And so then someone came out and said it was a moon rock. Well, no, a meteorite doesn't come from the moon, and it's not a moon rock. And there was all kinds of reports that it was a moon rock. And my, uh, my uh, second in college was geology. So I know that's why I can teach on the end times and I can teach on the history of the earth is because of my geology background. But I had a geology background before I went to college. So I see this and I recognize that at any moment in time, a catastrophic event can happen to the earth just yes. right out of the blue that science can't predict. Can science predict everything? The answer is no. Can, are scientists trustworthy? And the answer is no, because they are limited to their understanding of and the information that they have at their fingertips. Right. So, I do some digging, and there is an asteroid that's coming towards the Earth, and it's gonna come, it's gonna be a flyby, and they even know the date already. The flyby is going to be in April, and it's gonna be on April... Next year? No, uh, uh, 2029, it'll be on April, I think it's April 14th, 2029. 2029 here, let me, uh, anyway, I had it outlined. This is not my color copy of this. But anyway, so it's gonna be in April, mid-April, 2029. They're saying now, it's gonna come so close to the Earth, they're saying now on many websites, space websites, that don't worry, it's not a danger. 
And then other websites are saying, well, we're pretty sure it's going to pass in between our satellites and the Earth, possibly even taking out satellites. And then another article I read said, and no, it won't come anywhere near the satellites. Really? You know where the satellites are going to be in 2029? And the new ones that are going up right now that aren't even accounting for in your article? How can you be that arrogant and say you know for a fact that this asteroid is not going to take out maybe a satellite or maybe a bunch of satellites. Mm -hmm. And any asteroid that comes even close to the Earth, if it bounces off the, if it's a big asteroid, which this is, this, this asteroid is as big as a park, a giant park in New York City, all right? So that's a lot of, that's, you know, 15 million tons is a lot of rock to have going through the air right near you. Mm -hmm. The asteroid, the meteorite supposedly that boomed through Wisconsin, according to them, was three meters. Now, I know what I saw, it wasn't no three meters. This thing was probably, um, I, I would say it was um, 30 feet in length, not nine feet in length. Mm -hmm. And it, it, supposedly, according to this, it was moving at 70,000 miles an hour. And it was seen in five states. It was seen in five states. All the it, it set states. off, right, and you read this article uh, before tonight, and uh, so, you know, we're armed with this information. So something that small being seen, uh, witnessed in, like, you know, Iowa and Minnesota, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. Illinois, mm -hmm. um, that's interesting because the one that you're talking about that's coming. People know it's coming. I mean, I would imagine that the entire country would see it. Right. Not only are we going to see it, but we saw hail bop. We did. Uh, for, what, 18 months? Mm -hmm. And it was in the day sky and the night sky? Yeah. Uh, and we even named one of our colts that was born on our farm hail bop. Yeah. Right? Right. So um, fascinating. And then, uh, you know, these, these things are, but we knew that was going to be a distance away. I don't know yeah. how many right. hundreds of thousands of miles it was while it traveled yeah. in, in cooperation with the earth for that long period of time. But uh, I, I, I'm doing a calculation. If, if, this is presumptuous, but if this is the asteroid that prophetic scripture talks about, that the book of Revelation mm -hmm. talks about, which we'll cover some more next week because we're not going to get this all done tonight. If this, in fact, is it, then if I back this date up from April, 2029, three and a half years, if it's actually hitting in the middle, mid tribulation, which is three and a half years in. And if I back it up, then I'm back in the fall for a fall feast in 2025. And so. But you said it's coming in April. Right. But Wormwood, I, I believe, is in the middle of the tribulation. Okay back that up three and a half years and we get the rapture okay the rapture then happens in the fall as we opened up talking about and it would have to be on the feast of trumpets which would okay. be i don't have the 2025 here but the mm -hmm. feast of trumpets presumably be anywhere from september to october correct in 2025 and I can look it up for next week and we'll bring we'll continue this conversation next week. So the the rapture could occur as early as a fall of 2025 armed and I mean I don't know why why did God bring all this information and surround me with this information unknowing. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but there was a reason why I was supposed to sit there. There's a reason why I, and, and, and record in my head what's going on. I, you know, and I, you're not supposed to say the day of the, day of the hour. We know that these, the, the current feast calendar is unreliable, but it's close. It's, it's within mm -hmm. two days to 30 days off, maybe, maybe longer, maybe 60 days off, but it's in, a rel it's in a season. It's not the day or the hour, but it's in a season. We could actually have the rapture occur quite soon. We could. Again, we, you know, scientists are saying it's not going to hit the earth. 
But other scientists are saying it's unpredictable because it could, it could get nudged, it, it, a gravitational field could pull it out of its current predicted orbit and pull it a little, just all it has to do is just bing, just a little, just a little gravitation. Mm -hmm. And it can pull it where it meets up with the Earth in 2029. It's definitely gonna combine 2029. That they have calculated. And it's gonna be in between our satellites we have up there now and terra firma, which means it could take out a satellite. Or it could at least, you know, we know sunspots cause problems with satellites now. And radio. This is not a sunspot. This is very close to the Earth. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to be here for it anyway. But I'm just saying that this pushes the timetable up, not to another six years. It could be just another, we're in 2022. This could be three and a half years from now. This, the rapture could presumably occur. Right. But we don't know the day or the hour, but we must be ready. If, if, the, if the homeowner knew when the thief was going to uh, break into his home, he would have been on the alert. So you too, be on the alert, for you do not know the day or the hour. That's right. Amen? That's and exactly we'll continue right. this discussion of the timetable and how the timetable moves uh, next week. Okay. All right? Sounds good. Father, we thank you for this teaching here tonight. We give you honor and glory and praise. And Father God, we know that there's no fear here because we're not going to be here Amen. Uh, when all these, these uh, terrible events begin to uh, come upon the earth and your wrath is poured out upon the earth. And Father, we thank you for this teaching tonight. We give you honor and glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Click subscribe. Click the thumbs up on our messages. Click the little bell. Get your friends saved. Get your family saved.